Hello and welcome to the Golden Rod Podcast, bringing you some of the latest and greatest Pokemon news and a few laughs along the way. I'm Ben, and as always, I'm joined by fellow Pokemon enthusiast, Connie. This week, we're discussing Game Freak's Project Bloom announcement, rumors of backwards compatibility coming to Pokemon Home, as well as the final batch of Pokemon Ultimate Journeys episodes coming to Netflix. As always, you can jump to a topic using the timestamps in the description below. One day I'm going to get that in, in one breath, and I don't know when it'll be. Just, it's it's fine. You don't need it in one breath. It needs to sound natural. That was actually something I realized. So when I was editing these early episodes of the podcast, I used to try and take all my breaths out yeah. and I'd like shorten down the episode so it cut out all the blanks and stuff like that. And I started realizing it sounded just quite unnatural. So, so I, like, I, I don't edit quite as heavily as I used to now. Yeah, I think podcasts are one of those things where you can get away with it because it you want it to seem human like you are yeah. you, you're, you're listening in on a conversation whereas when you do like youtube videos like i'm sure the you video do, essays your, and the, stuff like that yeah you, you do want to take it out the out of it because like i i've had it before where you're listening to somebody and you can hear the lip the lip smacks and just like it just sounds doesn't sound good it, it, like in your ear and you've got like and i'm like oh, no, i still can't. do my best to take those out i still do yeah, my yeah, very yeah, best yeah. to take all that out it, and part um, of that is like, like behind the scenes, like having to, like all the filters and stuff on the microphones, and it's an absolute pain to do them because like there's no one setting. Like no. you can't go onto YouTube and go, okay, what's everyone else using? Copy theirs because it's different because it's different for because everyone. it's your voice. voice. Yes, yes, and it, it's taken me like four years to get my voice sounding okay, where, like, roughly I, where you like it. Yes, exactly. I'm sure there's more I could do, but like not without. I don't. I've done this in the past where I've got it nice, sounding nice, and then I've messed with the filters and not saved them, and then I'm like, oh, can't get back to how I how yep. I like them. So yeah, and, and and absolute absolute nightmare. Shall we jump into the news this week? Yes, let's do it. First topic. Right, which Project one are we doing first? Bloom. Are we doing We're doing Project? Let's do Project Bloom. Project Bloom so. first. Pokemon developer Game Freak has revealed a new action adventure game called Project Bloom. They're working with it, the the press release said working with developer Take Two Interactive. However, it's actually um, a subsidiary of Take Two Interactive, which is I've got it written down here somewhere. Private, private division, division. Yep. which I'd never heard of until this. However, I have heard some of the games that they put out, including The Outer Worlds, Kerbal Space Program Two, Oli Oli World. Um, I've never played any of them though. I don't know if you have. So I have the Outer Worlds. I played, or I say I had it. I was on Xbox Game Pass for a little while. Yeah. Phenomenal game. Actually, Oops. phenomenal game. As far as like open okay. world games go. And so like comedic game as well. Weirdly okay. funny game. Yeah, it's very, very good. So very, very good. You played Kerbal Space Program though, haven't you? No, I've I've seen it's it's on my to playlist at some point because I I just love those games of chaos and insanity where like you're like oh I'll do this and you get an outcome that you don't expect to happen. Um, my understanding is it's basically minions trying to get to space. Is that basically uh, some yeah, it it's, it's yeah. similar to it, but it's like really in depth. You have to build your spaceship with all the rockets and all the stuff and. You launch it at a certain trajectory, and then you've got to manage it all throughout space, and it's oh, weirdly okay. accurate to actual space navigation and so rocket science. Right, okay, so it has got, like, almost real-world science sitting yes. behind it in terms of, like, well, if you put a thruster here, it will, like, in the real world, it would do this, and that kind of translates over to the game. Mm -hmm. okay and the outer i always get this confused the outer world it, it's different than the outer wilds is the outer worlds the one where there's a gimmick where you revive or something or you're in a loop i don't remember that okay okay i remember listening a long time ago to a podcast that reviewed either the outer worlds or the outer wilds and ever since then i've wanted to play whichever one of the two they were talking about the outer <laughs> worlds know. is kind of like think fallout in space oh really yeah. oh okay 
Okay, okay. I like that. It's like old but school Fallout. With, with the humor of maybe like Borderlands, although better executed in a lot of ways. Okay, okay. that sounds like a perfect combination of all these things coming together. So what does that mean then for Project Bloom? So according to, um, I'm going to butcher this, Kota Furushima? Director at Game Freak uh, in the news release said, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to create a new IP that is bold and tonally different from our prior work. That, that to me, that to me gets me excited. Yeah, so the only thing we have at the moment, obviously we don't even have a name, it's just under the code name Project Bloom at the moment. And we have this beautiful image, mm. uh, which has been rendered out. I don't think it's in-game footage. Let's not all get excited about that. No. This is quite clearly an artist's um, rendering. But you've got a person standing in a sort of swampy, forested area with giant trees with roots looking all gnarled, sticking into the ground. There's these like fireflies slash light puffs floating around them the bloom coming in through the trees, probably hence the name. And the character is in traditional Japanese garb, straw hat and all, and it's got a sword at their side. So very, very different to anything we've seen from Game Freak before. Mm. Uh, and, you... uh, and I'll clarify, it looks realistic. If you told yeah. me this was a screenshot from uh, Elden Ring, I'd believe you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really good, really good quality. And I think for me, what excites me most about, about this is it's just so different to what Game Freak is known for. And and I and part of me thinks, is that because of, you know, um be, because of I've forgotten the name of them now, uh private division? Like who who's taking the lead on this? Like what is game I want to know what is Game Freak's part in in all this yeah he... are they just a publisher potentially it's it's really strange because i for the longest time like we said you know game freak we want to try different things and i'm and it's one of the reasons i'm excited for this but the confusion for me or the lack of understanding is okay why have they partnered with another company to do this and is it simply because like get the people at game freak have come up with an idea and I've kind of thought, right, okay, if we're going to pursue this, we need to work with another company that maybe knows more about, I don't know, the engine that they're using, perhaps? Possibly. Or it, it, there's, a, there's a lot of questions I have, and I don't think we're going to have them on the podcast no, for no, no, no. a while, unfortunately. Sometime. This is not scheduled to come out until late 2025, early 2026. Yeah. So and we're it, a while off yet. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me to be honest with you if that if that release window moves even further back, mainly because um, private Div uh, the private division is working with uh, other companies to uh, work on seven either untitled or unannounced games. So they've got a lot in the pipe work at the moment, and obviously milestones and 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 whatnot can move. But all in all. I'm excited, and I'm looking forward to seeing Game Freak's name on something else. Yep. Uh, just want to add the quote here from Michael Woroz. I believe that Woroz. Uh, Chief Strategy Officer for Take-Two Interactive and the Head of Private Division. We're ready to help Game Freak unleash their potential, and we're honored to be the first Western publisher to work alongside this exceptionally talented and proven team to bring a bold new IP to market. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of me, part of me does think the reason that they've partnered with somebody else is because maybe they've got maybe Game Freak's got all these amazing ideas, but not the in-house need... talent to pull it off. Yes, yes, that's what I'm. I thinking. feel really, I feel really bad saying that, but that's like, where I'm at. Game Freak, sorry, Game Freak's really, really good at what they do. Uh huh. I, I, I'll credit that. I, I think there's improvements that they can make, but in house, they they do have a lot of skills, and, and they are really good at publishing the same same type of game every every now and again. But it they've got feels no experience like, with this kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. That's what it feels like, and it it, it does feel like they've got. Let's work with somebody else. 
and hopefully both companies benefit from it as well as the consumers. So all in all, excited to learn more about this, but I'd imagine it's going to be radio silence for another year or two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've had it announced. That's it for four years. That's it. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, topic. Pokemon Home. Could Pokemon Home become back backwards compatible? <laughs> Can't kind of shake his head. A new leak certainly hints at it. Now, no, it doesn't. I anyway. This this so so. I'm going off the news article that I uh -huh. read, and I'm on. I'm with you on this. That I was just like, okay, so there's an image that's been released of. Um, a, a the time mechanic, capsule. the time capsule that was in gold, silver, and crystal that allowed players to trade Pokemon back in time to so Pokemon Red, uh, Green, Blue, and Yellow. So I was like, okay, that is a hint. Let's follow it. This is this is going to be by the Pokemon Company or something else that makes the the. Let's say there's a link there, but it's published by Q's fashionable hats. So who I've never it's, heard of. It's Riddler Coup. So Riddler right. Coup is okay. the leaker of pokemon and very often does these kind of cryptic tweets that the fan base have to tear apart and try and work out but there's mm -hmm. no there's nothing else here it is literally just a picture of the time capsule which could very <laughs> much just be a case of we're getting legends arceus coming in so we're going to need a time machine to get those pokemon through yeah it could yeah yeah you know because W would he post something like that just because? Yeah, it's cool. It's what he does. <laughs> yeah, it, it's <laughs> the a, man is a tease. Yeah, there there are uh, Pokemon content creators on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, we 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 spoke with Go uh, Dusty Go Go when he was on mm -hmm. here, and he said like it works wonders for him in terms of engagement. Like just posting these cryptic things, whether it's images, text, potential games, and like he hasn't got any industry knowledge around what and i've got i know my uncle works at game freak and he's told me this is coming no it's just to get engagement that's not to say though well no ku has been proven time and time again to have insider knowledge sorry i was talking about just to go yeah, there, yeah. But, but, <laughs> but yeah um and i think i think regardless of whether or not this happens or not i think there's a i think there is a need for it I want to say, or at least a I, I'm confusion, I guess, that you can move Pokemon forward, but mm -hmm. then can't bring them back. back. And that, that has been the case for a long time. And what I don't understand is why that's still a barrier. And I get that there are certain moves and, and abilities and Pokemon that you can't bring back. But surely we have the Pokemon Home has the infrastructure in place to recognize those mons, those moves those abilities, and then go, no, okay. you can transfer. Are you, are you trying to go into Sword and Shield? These are the ones available to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or you try and transfer over and goes, oh, you can transfer it, but you'll need to delete this one move first. Yeah, um, and, then, and then realistically, it's not going to happen, but there should be a button of make compatible. Yeah, something as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, and it just removes. Because, like, it's not an, like... And the, the reason why I'm okay with that is because, like, let's say you have a Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet that has a move that is only available in Scarlet and Violet, and you think, actually, I want to I want to play Sun and Shield. I want to port it back. Like, the move relearners are a thing. So when you eventually port it back into Scarlet and Violet, you can get that move back. You can get that ability back using, you know, ability uh, patches, capsules, whatever it might be. So I don't see why this is an issue. And I'm I'm pretty sure I, i've read somewhere that legends pokemon can move backwards and forwards from sword and shield right as long as they aren't um so pokemon that are in both games can move backwards and forwards so you couldn't move basca legion uh or cleaver but the other pokemon i, I read that on the what, whatever the article was and i was a bit taken aback by it because i didn't think that was part i thought it was pretty much always move the pokemon forward via generation so like going back to pokemon bank you could move pokemon between auras and x and y but once you move them to sun and moon you couldn't then move them back to x and y and auras so apparently pokemon from legends arceus can be transferred freely between home bdsp and sword and shield so, yeah. i think that's th those three but they're all te but technically you can, gen but you, 8 but you can put Pokemon from Sword and Shield into BDSP and not from BDSP into Sword and Shield. Wait, what? Yeah. 
That's weird. Right, you'd think because those three almost form a triangle of Gen 8, like... See, this is the confusing part. Why... There seems to be no rhyme or reason as to, like... You can move, but you can't. It, it, like that always confused me with Pokemon Bank, and like there were certain Pokemon that you could move from Gen Six into Gen Seven, but once they were in Gen Seven, you couldn't move them back to Gen Six. It's always, it, I've always found it weird. And the only thing I can think of is when you move Pokemon to like forward a generation, it adds data onto that Pokemon to kind of go almost as maybe a check to prevent oh. hacking or something. Sorry, it what? says I'm I'm reading a different. So the the information I just gave you came from the Dexerto article article, which said that you could go from yep. uh, from Sword and Shield to BDSP, but not back. But on IGN, it says Pokemon Sword and Shield, uh, Pokemon from BDSP and Legends Arceus transferred to Sword and Shield will have their moves replaced by a move set natural to those Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Their original oh. moveset will return if transferred back. So I don't use Pokemon Home nearly enough to understand all this or have firsthand experience of it. So I don't know. It's very confusing. This is this has always been been my annoyance, I think, with moving pokemon between games is i'm sure you've seen that really complicated image that was doing the rounds when it was like arrows going and i wish it was as simple as like pokemon bank into pokemon home but then you had like two-way arrows for some of the games into pokemon bank one-way arrows then you had like the pokemon transporter in there as well um you had all the switch games the, the, this diagram it's not complicated in terms of understand it. once you have it laid out in front of you this this diagram it's really easy to understand but the process of doing it all is complicated like i don't understand i still I, to this day i still don't understand why it it isn't just one service and pokemon can freely move in and out of that so long as they exist their moves and abilities exist in previous iterations of games yeah, and at least from what that IGN article is saying is it doesn't matter what moveset it's got. It gets replaced with the level Something up else. moveset. Yeah, exactly. So... Which then begs the question of, like, what about event Pokemon and stuff with special moves? Do they get replaced? Do you potentially lose something when you bring it through? Like, w like you get an like event they go, Pokemon? They go back to normal when they go into Pokemon Home, but if, what if you replace some of those moves whilst you're in Sword and Hmm. It's really strange. And I think like you know what you know years ago when Pokemon Go got a massive overhaul and yeah. it was like and, and you you see this with so many games like mobile games and stuff where they over they have a massive overhaul and it fixes a load of legacy issues, brings a load of quality of life features to it. It almost feels like Pokemon Home is at that stage where it kind of needs it, where when it got released, it was good enough. But there's a load of functionality, like the the fact that um it's it's supposed to help you to replace the uh, what was it called when you could trade Pokemon online? You put a Pokemon almost up for auction, and you'd say what you want. Um, yeah, I can't the, remember what it was called. Poke just transfer no, Poke Portal, something Poke like Portal. that. Portal, something yeah. like that. Somebody screaming like, at us in the audience. I'm sure they are. And, you know, you'd see people, like, putting up a, a Rattata and they'd want a shiny Lugia or whatever it was. And then they release Pokemon Home and that function's nowhere near as good as it was. And it's it feels like Pokemon Home needs an overhaul. And I don't think we're going to get it, which is which is a shame because it, we're still, we still haven't have it, had it for Scarlet and Violet, which blows my mind because it's been out for several months now. And nearly half a year, actually, Anthony. Half a and year. What I don't, what I don't get is the fact that Scarlet and Violet should, in theory, have been the easier one to do, because all, all the difference between the Pokemon is that you need to add that they have a neutral Terra type, which is just pick one of their types at random. Whereas yeah. you think they made Legends Arceus work, where you have to change the ball, you have to give them abilities, you have to change out how the IVs work because that's all changed in there. 
change out the move set because there's some stuff that does like mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know freeze got removed and was replaced with frostbite and that it's a completely different mechanics for that game yeah and legends arceus is fully integrated now so why is it so hard it's a genuine question it's not me going how hard could it be no it's uh, why is it so hard mm. to do this yeah like it, it because i get that software and technology you know advances and Im improves but surely when you're building a new game you are checking software that it works with to go okay does does it still function together so you don't release a game and then almost have to go all right how do we make this compatible with pokemon home now and honestly like i i it wouldn't surprise me if you got to see under the hood of all the pokemon games i just get this feeling that, that including pokemon home they're all held together by sticky tape and yeah glue but and, the thing is you're literally you're not trying like pokemon aren't real yeah, so it's just data. What, what are you actually transferring? Uh, data points in a lookup table. If you think of how the randomizers work, it's a case of like, these are all the data points that each Pokemon could be. And then we just assign this spot is here. Mm -hmm. So why is it not a case of this game reads uh, Cyndaquil? This game reads Cyndaquil as X3149. It's not going to be that, but whatever. It reads it as X3149, but over in this game, uh, it's actually 18487. So X3149 equals 18147. Done. I don't mm. know if that's how it works, but it feels like it should. It, it feels like what it should be is you import a Pokemon to Pokemon Home, and you're not actually transferring that Pokemon. What you're doing is it looks it looks at the server and goes, okay, it assigns a digit for the Pokemon. It assigns a digit for its IVs, its EVs, its ability, its moves. And, and basically, if you looked at it, it would just be a string of digits and numbers that mm -hmm. would be your 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 Pokemon that you've ported over. And that would and and imagine that must be how it works because and imagine that's how it also checks for whether or not a Pokemon is legitimate. Because yeah. it would go, well, this Pokemon has this move, which is this number or digit. Which, which isn't doesn't, in my isn't... agreed upon yeah. as this should be available. So you'd imagine that's how it works. So I... I it, and and then, why are they changing up the table every time as well? Well, you shouldn't, because all you should actually need to do, I'd imagine, is go, okay, so we added these 10 moves, and therefore we need a digit for each of those moves that goes into the currently existing database, and mm -hmm. then you tack on an extra column that goes terror type, and then there's 18 terror type values uh, assigned to that. Mm -hmm. That you'd, you'd think that is how it works, and that's how easy it is, and therefore when you roll out a new game, there's only a handful of data points that you need to change and the only thing i don't, I don't know it, I, i'd love to get into more of this because like obviously when sword and shield came out that that would have introduced well now we need a system that can handle dynamaxing and gigantamaxing information or at least gigantamaxing actually because dynamaxing every pokemon can yep. can do it um so it, but that's surely just a yes no yeah like can it, it, that's, is it a, that's, a, that's an form? on off call there <laughs> yeah yeah you'd think so so I, I, so I really do not know what is taking poke, like the roll out of Pokemon Home for Scarlet and Violet so long, and it, it ultimately, like it, in my head, it comes down to one or two things: either it's a resource issue and they haven't got the time to do it, or it's not a priority, or it's a knowledge issue that you know they they aren't quite sure how to roll it out because things have changed. In, in maybe the way they do things or Scarlet and Violet's engine, whatever it is, and now it, they're struggling to get those connections in place. So I think a lot of it might actually come down to the fact that these games, as we've said before, are held together with, like, sticky tape. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. yeah. You ever heard the term spaghetti code? Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is Which, for those of you who don't know, is the idea that when you're coding... Sometimes you just need to make something work yeah, and you, you can do it effectively and efficiently mm -hmm. and break it all down and go step by step and step by step and have it all neatly arranged. But if you're under time pressure, sometimes you just got to get it going. And yeah, yeah. that means that A, it's harder to fix bugs 
because you go back and you look and you'll change one thing and that'll break something 13 steps down the line somehow and you're not entirely sure how and trying to find where that issue is is always a problem. So if we have to assume that every Pokemon game for the last forever has been done under time pressure, there's got to be a lot of spaghetti code within it and you're now going, okay, all of this like, different brands of spaghetti code try and find how to make them work with each other and not break everything in the meantime yeah yeah it it, it really does feel like that it, it, and i think we only have to look at scarlet and violet and some of the issues that came out like uh, was it zorora or zorora it was zorora it was, it, yeah it's just busted Zorua. and it's, it has been fixed every single bug patch yeah because it is just like almost how how together it's it, like you said it's the spaghetti code so it's it's going to be interesting to I, pokemon home is a bit like pokemon go in terms of it's popping up more and more in the news and i don't want it as a service like pokemon home should just be like i would it should I would, be boring yeah, it should it should be us going <laughs> yeah so this week uh pokemon home had an update it's now available uh scarlet and violet and that's it like it the and then we don't hear about it for another year or two when a new Pokemon game's announced. Then you go, yeah, it's it's now available. Like that that should be the news for Pokemon Home. And it's it's just the more I, I think about Pokemon Home, the more I just feel like it's just broken as a service, or at least it doesn't work in the way that I I think it should do as a consumer. Yes, I agree with you. Anyway. Especially as a paid service. Yes, that that's that's the thing that annoys me really with it with the yeah. Anyway, I I don't want to go into into a rant. Anyway, let's move on to um the next piece of news. Yeah, otherwise I, I will rant. I can't. Okay, no, 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 it's fine. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna round us off. If yep. it is backwards compatible, do you care? Um, is there anything from from Scarlet and Violet you want to take back to Sword and Shield? Because it will still only be things that are available in Sword and Shield. Yeah. Um, do, do I care? Do I care? Um, yes, a little bit. Like, it would be... No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 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 so. Right. The annoying thing is, yes, I would like to bring my chosen Pokemon that I've built bonds with into past games. The issue, though is that I can't, even if I restart the game and play the game and I pour over those Pokemon, they're not going to obey me and it's not going to be a challenge anymore. So there's like, yes, I would like to bring those Pokemon back if there was a function available that made it worthwhile doing it. But there's not, and therefore I probably won't. Okay. So I still haven't done the post game of Sword and Shield or the final like ultimate battle tournament thing that you do. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's some Pokemon that I played through Sword and Shield, uh, played through Scarlet and Violet with. I wouldn't mind bringing those back and getting them to Gigantamax and giving them some soup and being like, okay, this is the per this is the same Growlithe that I journeyed through Paldea with is now winning the, I... the, 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 the Galar Championship. Yeah. With. Actually, there is one Pokemon, Gallade. I had a Gallade in Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver that I specifically bred to catch the roaming dogs. Because mm -hmm. if you if you bred it with, uh, it was one of the ghost Pokemon. It could learn me and Luke. It could learn full swipe. It could learn sword stance. Um, so, and uh, I think it could learn hypnosis as well. So that Pokemon was built for catching those dogs, and it came with me through each iteration of games as my catching pokemon mm -hmm. it's currently in sword and shield so it's currently living there um and eventually i will bring it to scarlet and violet however if i ever went you know what i want to go back and try and you know shiny hunt one mm -hmm. of the you know uh, one of the reggies or something like that it will be useful to bring it back with me so that there is one pokemon that i would do it for all right that makes sense uh, let's move on to the next piece of news. Pokemon Ultimate Journeys comes to Netflix, kind of. So uh, the Pokemon company has announced that a third batch of episodes from Pokemon Ultimate Journeys uh, are going to premiere on Netflix on June the 23rd. My takeaway from this was, oh, we're getting all the episodes, but then, no, we're getting the third batch. I've just logged on to Netflix. I'm a UK... Uh, uh, I live in the UK. I can't see any Pokemon Ultimate Journey episodes. Can you? It's not till, the, it's not till June the 6th. 
Oh, okay, right. That's why I can't see them. So we're getting the first batch on June the 6th. Which is like 15 episodes. Okay, and then the next set after that, and then the final set, June the 23rd. So it's all coming in June. Right. Uh, okay. w- yes, I believe. Yes. So we got the... the you said the six, I'm going to double-check that now. June the 23rd, so that's first and third batch. So imagine the second batch is in the middle somewhere. You'd like to okay. think. Uh, series, again, the then, show. Pokemon. See, it's different. This might be US Netflix. See that? Yeah, yeah. It might be US Netflix because over here we've still got Pop TV gets the license first for some reason. Okay. Uh, That's where so we need to go. Netflix has released the final 51 episode season in two 12 episode chunks with the previous one hitting the service this February. So there you go. We didn't get that. There you go. We didn't get it. Part okay, three is right. slightly larger and will consist of 15 episodes. 12, so if 12 plus 15, that's not 51 episodes. No, it's not when you said that. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but even if it's 12, 12, 12, that's still not 51, that's... 36. Even even four twelves. Yeah, bizarre. Um, so if you if there you go. So if you're an American listener, lucky you. If you're a UK listener, pop TV. Pop TV, unfortunately. Which is that a free it's a free service, isn't it? Uh I believe so. Well, there it's it's free as far as tv goes i mean if you pay for tv it, yeah which is a good old tv license that's another thing i could rant about <laughs> so i'm not going to people living in other countries like tv license yeah the uk we have to pay a tv like, well you don't have to but you probably should if you're watching streaming and all that stuff so that was that was kind of a nothing week as far as news goes I was, I was, I still enjoyed those first two discussions, though. It's always nice to to discuss these things, but I, I'm the, for me, it's this week's episodes of Pokemon Ultimate Journeys that I really want to get into because why did when... you think they were good or something? No, <laughs> they were definitely something. Um, so it was really weird because typically we do three episodes each week and then we discuss them and. We couldn't do that because, like, three episodes would leave us in the middle of the battle against Leon. So we ended up watching, is it five episodes? Because they have episodes. a kind of off day episode. Yes. And then four back to back episodes of Ash versus Leon. Which we are going to discuss in a moment. But let's discuss that, that one episode that kind of sits on its own, which, like, I thought this was. I'm going to say a nothing episode. It's not nothing, but I, but I mean like the Eternatus foreshadowing at the start of the episode. Mm-hmm. I thought that was... not. I thought, oh, okay, that's weird. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, wait, is Leon going to Gonna use bring that? it. <laughs> that was my thought was, oh, Ash has got to fight this Eternatus. But then I was thinking, well, how does that work? Because he doesn't have any of the legendary dogs. So, like, is Zacian or Zamazenta? Um... I get why they included that now because it's yeah. to remind the audience that yeah, this Pokemon's still around, um, and you you might want to remember that. And I and I do find it interesting that it goes like, hey, Leon, this Pokemon, yeah, at some point could become not a complete d bag, so <laughs> it needs a good trainer to show it that, and I'm not a good enough trainer for that yet. You are, yeah, agreed. Well done, yeah. Hop. Yeah. Actually, some good. Good thought from which, you. Well done. W- which, like, as as somebody, right, as somebody who, like, is realizing that this is fiction, this isn't real, like, fine, I can get on board with that. But, like, part of me thinks if that was a regular child and it was the real world and this is a one-of-a-kind Pokemon and you're giving it away, surely you go, listen, I've got a contract here that I want you to sign saying oh, yeah, you absolutely. don't own it. <laughs> well, no, it's, 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 if it was the real world, the child wouldn't think of that. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. They <laughs> so would just know. give it away and they would, then Leon would never give it back. No, exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I think, so that's, that's the intro to this episode, which is just like its own little section and then we get into the the main episode which is cinderace reuniting with the nickets that saw all the way back in what episode one episode two maybe yeah it was a while back like the very start of uh pokemon journeys and um they're facing off against 
I always called them Zigzagoon, but that's not how the poke the the anime Zig pr Zigzagoon. Yeah, I'm like it, Zigzagoon. It really breaks up the words, and I can't, I I can't say it because no. my brain just functions Zigzagoon, like just yeah. just one. Um, and the main story is basically there's another gang that's rolled up, Meowths and Berserkers. Um, Team Rocket's involved, which I didn't like. I actually didn't like their inclusion. Oh, okay. Here because, like, for me, they've been too good recently. That's it. Like, it almost felt like they'd gone from okay, we're the bad guys to actually, you know what? We're gonna root on this kid and this this kid. We we we're, we're behind Ash winning this competition, and then they backtrack to going, we're gonna steal all the Pokemon. Potentially, and I know they 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 they're not good enough, but potentially they could like hit some of Ash's team, which mm -hmm. hinders his performance. So like it was, I just didn't like that they they brought back the old Team Rocket here. On honestly, yep. it was it, I wasn't a fan of that, mainly because like the the like we've had they've been it's, part of the tournament for what nine ten episodes. Yeah, cheering especially people on. when a more fun story would have been Team Rocket working in the background to make sure Ash doesn't get in a fight with this stupid go. gang that he's got involved in. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Exa exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we... we Team Rocket retire at the end of the this series, don't they? Like, yeah. I, I think. From what I've so heard. So, like... So, let's, let's start putting that in place now rather than having an episode where the bad guys and almost... Like... Yeah, br bringing it back. Um, the, the it also doesn't couple... make sense to me. Sorry. Just that... Meowth is happy to work for a Berserker, considering Meowth's entire character <laughs> is about the fact that he hates that Persian gets all the love. Yeah, and yeah, why would he work for down. someone yeah. like that? Why would they walk for work for Big uh, Boss Berserker? Agrees. Um, I, I think the only like the only real highlight for me for this was um. Like when they get into that big battle and there's like four v four and it's just a little bit yeah. chaotic and you've just got the Cramorant just wandering around to retrieve the Aracuda <laughs> that it's fired off and you have got Greeky riding it like that was a bit of fun really enjoyed that and like Cramorant Cramorant in the games have, is never seen quite switched on but the anime <laughs> really made it, you think it's like the chicken from Moana have you ever seen Moana? Yes. Yeah, yes, that, yeah, that's yeah. what it reminds me of. Like, there's no, there's no higher brain function going on there. It's just, it just wanders around. Um, and the, does, the only... does really good work with the Aracuda as well. They yes. played that really well because they send out the Aracuda from the from the mystery the machine. Balls, and I'm like, yes. what are you gonna do with that on the <laughs> Cramorant? Uh, that makes Cramorant sense. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the the only other, um, like link between this and the next couple of episodes is. Um, confirmation that Ash is battling Leon tomorrow, and Go's not going to be there. Yeah, Go gets called away for Project Mew, which, let's face facts, he's barely been in any of his other battles, so what does it matter? Yeah, he missed it. He missed a handful. I'm, like, I, I, and we'll go into this in more detail, but I do feel sorry that, like, for Ash, who has had all these adventures, all these friends, and yet he's got only Chloe and Don, and that's it. That's all that showed up for him. And and it's so like they should have been like could you could you imagine Connor if you got to like a, let's say you, you entered worlds a competition or mm -hmm. something and you got to the final and your parents were just like no nah, I'm just gonna watch it from home well the thing is it's not <laughs> even like entering the Pokemon World Finals because this is like the, the main the sport of the world and the World Championship yeah. of it so it'd be like entering the football World Championships and people being like oh you're in the finals no I'm good. Yeah, it's on TV. Well, even better than that. Just... What's a one v one sport that's like world famous? Or the At Olympics? Least, you get into the finals of the, the Olympics. Olympics, and do Olympics have finals? I don't know. The point still no, stands. No, but you'd be ridiculous. pretty good if you were in the in the Olympics and you told your family, "Well, like, well, it's on TV, so we'll just we'll just watch it on TV, stay at home." Like, come on, come on. These, and I get that some of these people can't go because of jobs, work, whatever it might be, but like. Oak, your own mum, Brock, Misty, like where, where are where are they in all this? You know, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous that nobody's there for him. Yeah, should we just move on to the next episode then? Uh, I want to finish off this episode if we can before I move on to another one. 
Because there's one okay. final thing I want to talk about in this episode, and that's that, you know, Thievel can afford by running. Yeah, how does that work? <laughs> like, they don't steps? attack anything. They just run around <laughs> in a circle, and I'm, and they start glowing. I'm like, are they doing, like, tri-attack? I didn't know Thievel got try it or Nick it got tri-attack. What's happening? Oh, they're evolving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, I think this episode... <laughs> This episode felt to me like they suddenly turned around and went, hey, guys, we're leaving Galar soon, and we've kind of not been in Galar for most of the series, so we've not introduced a whole bunch of Pokemon. Should we take an episode to just throw as many as we can at the screen? Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, actually thinking about it with all the Pokemon that came out, yeah. That makes sense. Um, because it, it's, it is one of the criticisms that I've had throughout this series is that Galar has suffered because of the format. And I, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the format. I like the fact that we aren't just going through eight gym badges and Ash gets to a final that he ends up losing or he gets really close to um, or potentially wins. I am glad that they've done it in the way that they've done. But like I, whenever I have seen any of the Galar stuff, I'm just there thinking, give me more of that. Yeah. I really want to see Galar fleshed out. Yeah, as great as it has been to go and visit other locations again, Galar has suffered for it, and there's no two ways about that. Yeah, yep. Let's move on to the 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 four the the batch of four episodes. And I think what should we just go through like highlights, what we liked, what we didn't like? Yeah, yeah. How we normally do these battle episodes, otherwise it's gonna get it just gets manic. Tell you what, do you want to start at the end and work our way back? No, I want to start at the no. very beginning. Because on, Ash is put on the back foot straight away because he goes, I'm going to start with Pikachu yeah, and he's going to like carry me and it's going to be great and we're going to start off strong. And Leon points out to him, he's like, I love it, but you got to think about strategy. And we see yeah. Libero Cinderace. I know. Which is really cool because I don't know if we've seen like protein or anything in the series before. And the way it I was... The way it was demonstrated was maybe not the strongest, but I also don't know mm. how else you would show that off. I yeah, I, I it's it's one of those abilities where like it works in game, but in the anime, like how do you show that off? And you're you're absolutely right. And like it's it is one of those annoying things that I have where it's like Ash doesn't seem to realize it's only from Leon telling him. It's like, why you talk about strategy, Leon, and yet you've just given away your strategy. Like, what? If I was Leon and I want to win because I do want to win, you'd think, okay, what advantages do I have? And then the reason I bring that up is because at the start of the, the battle, the referee says, you're allowed one of the three gimmicks. And Leon goes, nah, Ash, you can use all three, but I've only got the one. Come at me, which, bro. Which which is a flex, and I, yeah. I can see it as the flex that it's meant to be, but it also is like, you're an idiot. <laughs> mm. You're an idiot, yeah. and I think it kind of takes away from Ash's win. Agreed, yeah, because it's like, okay, Ash did win, but would he have, win, would he have won if he did, wasn't able to use all three things? Yeah. And he, he, he gig well, spoilers, he Gigantamax twice. Twice. Got <laughs> his do. Mega Evolution and his Z-Move in there. Yeah, yeah. Which is... <laughs> it, it, it seems a... <sighs> like, if Leon had done the same, it, I wouldn't be so mad. That's it, that's it. That That's the thing, and I... It would have been nice to... I don't think our boy I, needed the handicap. No, and it would have been nice to see, like... They needed to come up with a way where... And I get why they wanted to give Ash all three because it is like... It shows that Ash is well-traveled. He's built up these, you know, these skills that he's got. And it allows him to showcase the best of his team. I can, mm -hmm. I'm completely on board with that. But it's like, how can you balance that out so it's fair for Leon? Because Leon, as far as, you know, it would have been... To be fair, it would have been quite nice. and But I don't think it would work in a story-wise if, like... Ash is suddenly surprised when one of, like, when Leon just whips out a Z-move. He's like, yeah, I went to Alola once. Like, but it would feel almost tacked on. And I mm -hmm. don't think, it, like, I, so... But do you think it felt tacked on when Cynthia had a Dynamax band? No, because they're in Galar, I guess. Okay. But why would and... Cynthia have a Mega Band? 
Like, we know Steven has one from the games. Right, yeah, we do. We know Deantha has one. Yeah. No, I get, I get your point. We, we get... know uh, Alan has one, but Cynthia just kind of had one, and then Cynthia one. just kind of had a Dynamax band. Yeah, I get that. I, I, I think it would have worked really nicely. I, I think he... I think they needed, whether, whether or not it was giving Leon all three, they needed a way to kind of go, Ash hasn't got an advantage because Leon, the reason Leon said that is because, A, I want to give people a spectacle, but also I'm not giving, I'm not giving you an advantage out, Ash, because I can also use that. And we mm. don't get that. What we get is, like you say, Leon flexing and... It kind of comes back to haunt him. And don't get me wrong, like, even if even if the writers were like, oh, no, you can only use one, Ash still would have won. They would have written around it. But, like, it, like if you're going to give us all three, balance it out for both characters. Yeah. That That is my annoyance with, with that. Um, what we also see, s s talking about strategy, is um, Inteleon using the same defense spin mechanic the <laughs> Pikachu, Pikachu ad, and it, it's absolutely like it's absolutely fantastic that like this battle for lack of anything shows us why Leon is so good, and it's because he's constantly learning, developing, and he's able to see the strengths of other trainers and go. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna learn that. that in two days. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Like he's learned it so quick, which which shows A, he's a really good trainer, and also that his Pokemon are like really I don't want not obedient, but like like can get on board with it yep. so quick. Um, which I absolutely love. Another highlight for me, um, Mr. Rhyme. Absolutely like the just so casually skating around. Do you know love what? It. So the Mr. Rhyme bit was really, really cool. I think the only thing that really bugged me about it was expanding force looks really weird. And they change up the way it looks both times they use it. Oh, I didn't notice that. Like right, once he like okay. he pokes him with his stick and it just kind of Gengar just dies. And then the next time he like puts it out from his belly mouth thing. Because apparently Mr. Oh, Ryan yes. has a belly mouth thing. A, a thing, yeah, yeah. Don't like it. No, none nope, of you have. No. Nope. But he's like skating around this whole time. And Ash sends in Sir Fetch to use Fury Cutter yeah. on the ice. Yes. And I'm like, that's really smart. You've just like taken <laughs> yes. away his ability to skate. He's going to fall over. No. No. <laughs> um, expanding Force somehow gets released because if you use a bug type move against the psychic type move, it dissipates it. Don't, yes, don't it like that. And then Mr. Ryan continues to skate around as normal as if there was yep. no big gashes in the ice. And I'm like, yep. oh, and then as soon as Mr. Ryan goes away, the ice disappears. Nobody, it doesn't even know. It just, it just yeah, vanishes. It just goes. It just goes. Which is a shame because, like, because, like, the, the Mr. Rhyme coming in, I was really interested to see how Mr. Rhyme functions in the anime because it's one of those character designs where I, I really like the character design because it looks like that typical British bloke mm -hmm. that everyone imagines us to be. And then the fact that it's skating and then it has, like, a stick that it can use. I was like, okay, I'm completely on board with this. And... It's just, and then of course we get the psychic terrain, the 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 freeze dry to to put down the the ice, and we get the cursed body to to sh shut down one of its moves. Like I was completely on board with the, with this fight, and Surfetch comes in, like you say, and breaks this. It break it stops the psychic terrain, but but also it doesn't completely crash the ice. And then we cut to. Is it Diantha basically going, well, it's a bug move, so we can do yeah. that. I'm like, really? Like, what? And and I'm just like, right, okay. But one of the elements I did like is it shows... Ash, to me, this shows that Ash has learned from Cynthia. Because against Mr. Rhyme, Ash uses a combination of Gengar, Surfetched, and then Lucario. Like... He, he 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 sends in the he, he uses the Gengar first to and curse body. Then he brings in Surfetch to to get rid of the psychic train. And then he brings in the Lucario to to mega evolve it and then fight it. And like we talk about Leon, you know, learning these things, but also actually I think the subtle hints that Ash has learned from his encounters with with previous champions. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that.
Mm. Um, I'm trying to think what other Pokemon Leon used because he so, uses Cinderace first and then goes what? Yep. Straight into Inteleon? Inteleon. Inteleon's Gengar... his first one to go down because Ash is yep. actually ahead for the most he, of this fight. He is, yeah. But it, does it feel like he's ahead? No. And Leon makes a very good point. He's like, yeah, I'm a Pokemon down, but all of your Pokemon have taken damage. Yeah. Yeah. All of your Pokemon are shattered and mine aren't. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And um, he uses the Dragapult. So we see Lucario versus Dragapult. And that Dragapult's really good. I, I, I absolutely love Dragapult's design. I love the fact that they've copied over into the anime where its tail kind of vanishes as mm -hmm. well. Love that design. Um, and then we find out quite how far it vanishes up when it uses Dragon Tail because it's like super yeah, long. Yeah, it's, 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 it's you because we get. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, it is absolutely ridiculous size. And of course, we get to see the Dreepies in action, which is always like I've always wondered how that would work in the anime. And we we get to see the battle between Dragavish and, and Dragapult, which isn't a battle I thought we'd get, but it was one that I really enjoyed, but it was really weird. So because... Drag Dragavish awakens. Yes. Whatever which isn't, that means. And isn't get, in the game. Like, energy spikes on its belly which can be used as like a second jaw yeah i like i like the idea of it i just it felt a little bit pulled out of nowhere yeah yeah that that's my that's my problem with it is that if it was an ability in the game you'd be like you know like it, but it i think functions... we already know that dracovish has strong jaw i think it's been it's... said in previous episode his dracovish has strong jaw oh yeah it has hasn't it because it uses it with Fisher's Rend and I Ice Bang and ice all bang that. So, like that. Yeah. so you can't really give it a second ability. But the, but like you say, this just kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, but what I do like is how Leon then deals with it because he's got yeah, he's 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 Dragon Puts all caught up, can't move, but then uses Dragon uh, Dragon Tail, which is another one of those things where you you imagine you know how it functions in game, but you always, but you never think they're ever gonna have it in the anime and then yeah, they it's do like you turn and stuff like that you're like how would that even function how could a pokemon force you back to a ball or whatever which brings in interesting mechanics because it sends it back and then dragonite comes in you actually see dragonite look around like wait what what just happened like, uh, i wasn't I was in, summoned hang on like, what's yeah like i'm like how i don't get how that functions but it made for a good spectacle because dragapult ends up fighting dragonfish dragonite Lucario, and then Dragonite again. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of switch, tr switch battling going on in this. And so at this point in the battle, like what I what I like is Leon's strategy almost seems to be force my po force my opponents to keep switching mons and just damage them all individually. Yeah. So I can basically by this point, like I know Dragapult's going to go down, but I've lost two Pokemon, and his Ashi's entire team has taken damage and like the fact that Dragapult va fights uh Dragavish, Dragonite, Lucario, and then Dragonite again, like that and it manages to knock out the Lucario as well. And then the only way I can't believe that like the way that Ash beats the Dragapult isn't with Draco Meteor. No, it's with Dragonite Meteor. Dragonite Meteor. Which I feel like we've seen before. I don't know if we have. Maybe okay. we have. It'd be interesting to know. I can't really... It, it came as a shock to me, but maybe it was in a past episode or something. Um, but, like, it's just the, 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 the battle between like those two... I feel like he used it against Iris way back Maybe. When. Okay. Okay. I um, might be wrong. What... Like, that battle was really interesting because you've got... Dragonite uses Hurricane, which sends Dragapult flying, which disrupts it with Thunderbolt, which in turn cancels cancels it out. It's just re it's a really, really weird fight between those two. But what I liked about it is it gave Dragonite a chance to shine, which it hasn't had in a long time. No, I was actually going to ask you, I think all of Ash's Pokemon got a chance to shine at some point through this series. Bar maybe Dragonite? Do you think yeah. it finally redeemed itself here? Um, Do you think it deserved to be in this Masters 8 final? 
No, it's Ash's weakest Pokemon, which mm. is a shame because Dragonite, for what I've spoken about in terms of Leon, where you know he's got good strategy, but like what his team seems to have is lots of diversity. Dragonite should have been that for Ash, that's able to use you know Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch. Like it has so, di, Dragonite and Dragon Pokemon in general can learn such a diverse range of moves, and yet Dragonite seems seems to have it's Dragonite is his Dragon Claw Pokemon. and Draco Meteor. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and a hurricane um, and dragon dance, dragon dance, which yeah, so isn't used very well here. Like he mm -hmm. tries to use dragon dance the first time he gets thrown out against the the, the dragapult mm -hmm. to try and defend against the dreepies, and then immediately gets switched out. So those buffs didn't do anything for it anyway. No, no, it it's it's one of them where in it in in these episodes we get to see. Ash's previous Pokemon, and I'm, I, when it, when I was watching, I was like, "There's a handful of Pokemon I would happily swap out." Yeah, Dragonite for um, because I haven't watched X and Y, but I'm pretty sure his uh, Noivern is it Noivern? Uh, yeah, they, like they were both really good on his team, right? They were powerful, hard hitters. No? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, like it just seems like Dragonite is considering it's a pseudo Pokemon. It it feels a bit underwhelming in the anime, yeah. unfortunately. Um, which is a shame because Iris's Dragonite is feels... super powerful, but we understand that his Dragonite is a lover, not a fighter, yeah. which is fine. And I don't mind yes. him going on journeys with it, but I want I I would have liked an episode where he goes, "I recognize you are a lover, not a fighter, so I don't think you should come with us to this." And maybe yeah. then it has an episode where it's like, "No," and stands in defiance, and it's like, "I I want to earn my place there." Yeah, and yeah. then it pulls off some spectacular thing and has a good win. Mm -hmm. Whereas I just mm -hmm. don't think it got a good win here. No, it, it it got a win. It didn't get you know one that it probably deserved. And like I'd be okay with Ash going. Okay, you're not the kind of Pokemon that enjoys fighting unless you have to. So let's play. Let let's think of a strategy that works for you. Whether or not it's like Thunder Wave attract. Um, charm, like things like that, that play into this this Pokemon's unique. Because we do see in these episodes, get angry. It does go, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm in this fight now, but it 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 doesn't feel like Dragonite got the attention it deserved. And the only reason I can think of is because it's a really you know it's a Gen One Pokemon, maybe. Um, but then again, Gengar isn't that got a load of episodes? Yeah. Hello. Mm, sorry, <laughs> I remember webcam. It's, like, it's, it's been out. like that old episode, I'll be honest with you. Taz and Tazzy. Oh, no, 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 it's been back and forth is what I mean. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. That's annoying. Um, So Dragonite stays stays in and we get to see Rillaboom come in. And I was really excited to see Rillaboom action because Rillaboom just absolutely thrashed Diantha. Diantha's team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And we get to just see Rillaboom's pure, like, just, like... There's a reason gorillas are scared in real life because they are 99% muscle. They are just pure muscle. You wouldn't want to fight when it rip you to shreds. And we see this in Rillaboom. Like the fact that, you know, the, it goes against Surfetched. And like, it really does feel like Rillaboom could potentially tear a lot of Ash's Pokemon apart. Yeah, I could see it's, that. It's just, it's just an absolute powerhouse to the point where. It takes down Surfetch despite managing to land a, a good meteor assault, and we get a part with Ash tells his mom to glide on his shield on the way down. Which... Yeah, okay, F fair enough. It's got wings, but yeah, let's use the shield. Yeah, sure. Um, which doesn't work for Ash. The the Surfetch goes down, and this time it does collapse. It does actually yeah. go down. Which I I think would you have preferred if they saved that for this? No, I think it worked against Garchomp. I, I think it worked really well against Garchomp. I think I think this is supposed to show just how strong Rillaboom actually is because it even puts Surfetch down. Yeah, I get that. I, I understand that. And I I I do think that the you know, when it gets when it faints but it stays standing, it you're right, it did work better in the previous episode um that we had. And then we get uh who comes in then? Is it Dracovish versus Rillaboom and like... pardon? I feel like it might be, yeah. Uh... Yeah, and we get like 
we get the drum beating again, and Dragovic just basically just grabs the vines and destroys him with ice. Thing. He's like, he's having none of it. And then he goes Dragon Rush to connect and knock out the the real boom. Yeah, um, Dragon Rush versus high horsepower, isn't it? That's it. And then Cinderace comes in and knocks out the Dragovic with a high jump kick. Yeah, yeah. So it, it it's it's one of my. I I like the fact that they keep switching. But because they do it, it doesn't feel like any of the Pokemon get a chance to shine up until the final fight, which yeah. is Charizard and Pikachu, which I kind of understand because like it had to come down to Charizard and Pikachu. But I'm getting, a, getting ahead of myself a, a, a little bit. Oh, no, no, we get Pikachu versus Charizard now, don't we? Like Ash is down to just Pikachu, but but yeah. Leon has Charizard and... um. Charizard and uh, Cinderace. We get yeah. the Gigantamax of Charizard, which completely threw me because I thought, well, this, I thought this was going to be the the, the, the final fi final fight. Yeah, like I thought it would come down to you've only got Pikachu left, I've only got my starter left, and let's do it. But it, so, so I was really G Max Wildfire versus uh, uh, Million Volt Thunderbolt, which, which is what we get here. But you yeah. thought it was going to be the very last yes. shot, effectively. That that's what I thought it was. I thought that is exactly what it was going to be. And we'd get to see what's stronger, a G-Max move or, you know, P Pikachu Z move and Pikachu just edges it out. But we don't get that. What we get is these attacks combined, combined and ruin the world. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And we, we get, like, it sends up an energy beam Fleet, like out of um um it's not Hammerlock. No, we no um out of Winden Stadium. Winden Stadium, but then in Hammerlock, we get a Tunisist just basically going, no, 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 what's going on here? I've got to be a part of this. It just My particles are going mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he just just shoots up shoots up to uh Winden Stadium and like basically just recharges their Dynamax bands. Yeah, Eternatus Which... kind of shows up. The whole battle stops. Everybody looks to the sky and we're like, oh God, are we going to have to like interrupt That's what the I final thought. battle? You know, because in the game, game, you don't get yeah. to do your final battle because Eternatus is being a douche. So, yeah. and instead it just like flies around and fixes the chaos that these two have caused by using such overwhelming power against each other. Yeah. Interesting concept. And then it just kind of flies off into the sky. And I'm like, that's that's not safe. Somebody no, needs to go get okay, that again. Bye. Leon's just going, oh, I'm meant to be taking care of this Pokemon. It just, it's Go's just... going to be so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job I didn't sign that contract. But, yep. but what, I, what I do like about it is it almost feels like Eternatus in the games never felt like some of the other Pokemon that were forces of nature. It yep. always felt like it was evil in some way. Whereas well, this it kind is an of... alien. Yes, yes. Which which is another thing I I learned doing a bit of research on this, but I what I do like about it this this episode is it makes it feel like oh no I am a force for nature it's probably just one that humans don't quite understand yeah it's it, you you are utilizing Galar particles which are intrinsically a part of me mm -hmm. much in the same way as Z moves are a part of Necrozma and stuff like that yeah yeah uh, yeah it it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting way that they wrapped it up and we get to see that same. A uh, shot of Eternatus flying through the clouds that we opened the series with. Yes. Oh, which yeah. Is, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um. So Dynamax uh, bands have, have have recharged, and we get Gigantamax Cinderace versus Dynamax. It is Dynamax Pikachu. Gigantamax right? Pikachu. Gigantamax Pikachu. Which Should I was a Pikachu little bit. So, uh, weirdly enough, this show has been very good. At, every time I've gone. Oh, it'd be kind of nice to see a thing. Oh, the thing's happening. <laughs> the thing. Yeah, 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 definitely. And we we do get to see the, this this battle on it. Um, the only uh, the note I've got here because I can't remember this part of the battle is uh, they only use one mo move each before they both go back yes, to their original do. forms. Why is that? Do you know? It's it's said that they both use so much power in that one move that they've used up all of their energy. All right. Okay. Kind of mm. feels. Yeah, it's BS. a bit of a cob. It was just a bit of a, hey, let's show off the fact that, you know, Gigantamax Cinderace is a thing and Gigantamax Pikachu hasn't been seen for many, many episodes now. Let's bring yep. it back. Yeah. Uh, which leads us on to Pikachu versus Charizard. And my note here is, wow, just wow. 
because it's, it's phenomenal. It's oh. honestly so good. And you it, can see where every frame of animation has been yeah. saved up yeah. till now yeah. and utilized perfect. But it gets almost better and perfect. Better. Almost perfect. Okay, what 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 go on? What's the thing that's some of the moving camera sections are a little bit choppy. Oh they, right. Okay. I, I've, did, I've seen it done smoother in other animations. That right, was the okay. only thing that stood out to me as a case of wasn't, any, as in it, the actual like zooms and pans and oh, okay. swift movement of the camera just felt a little bit frame jumpy. Uh, so there was like maybe like if they'd have just added an extra frame into Zoom. You, you, yeah, you could see where it was on twos yeah. and not necessarily on ones, which right. kind of felt like it wanted to be. Okay, I, I understand that. Um, but I think my one of my biggest praises for this is like the animation actually gets better because yes. you get the initial fight and you think, oh, I'm really happy with this. Like the, the quality is really good. And then you get the animation that, at the end when they both go at one another. I'm like, oh, this is even like they've, they've taken the animation, which was good and made it absolutely great. And like it's it's like it's it's absolutely beautiful like when you're seeing like charizard and pikachu up in the air and you got charizard i think using air slash and pikachu's trying to block it with iron tail and, uh -huh, and it's th running across the top of the ring yeah. surrounding wind and stadium and starts like, falling out the sky and they're see, attacking each other and that that is where i think i've had criticism of past episodes where it has felt like the game where it's like you you use move i use a move you use move Whereas this, it's felt very fluid. Like the Pokemon know how to fight. They're fighting. But then if they hear their trainers giving them an extra command, they'll go, right, okay, that's what I need to do. And You feel like, the impact of this one as well. The battlefield yes. gets torn up. And every time Pikachu uses Iron Tail, it's like living big chunks in the ground just taken away. I'm like, all right, cool. It's fantastic. Cool. And you actually feel like, yeah, like the, the impact of the moves, like when... You know, Pikachu ends up on the ground because it misses Iron Tail, and then Charizard uses is it Flame Blast? Fire I think blast. Fire Blast. It, like unlike previous episodes where it's felt like oh, it just feels like animation. This feels like it. It yeah, hits. burned. Like it hit. Like like, and then Pikachu go like. I love the shot because oh, I, all throughout this, I'm like, I know Ash wins, but like, how does he win? And you get the shot where. Pikachu gets hit by the fire blast, and then it's kind of like it blurs, eyesight blurs, and it collapses. And it drops. And like, okay, right. I'm, I'm wondering where. Okay, where, how does Ash then win? But I do like, like we get, we we get the confirmation that like, like Ash just spearing Pikachu one of, like it's not just me rooting for you. Like think about everybody that we've met. On you our do, genies. And you have every team from every region in order. Yeah. And you all get all in just their get final to... forms. Oh, just the, 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 like, I honestly, I, I I got a little bit emotional because like, it's like, oh, this is, and I, I don't know a lot of these teams because I didn't watch them, but just seeing like Bulbasaur and Squirtle, his glasses like pop into frame and then seeing them all. And then you see the Johto squad and the Bayleaf, and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And then Pikachu just kind of like, like shocks itself almost like gives it the, like a bit of spark of electricity oh a beautiful like black electric coming off it and it just, yeah oh the whole thing looks stunning and then the music kicks music in, kicks in and I'm just like yeah, see we can like when he when he and they just shows pikachu and then you you hear the music kick in then you see like the thunderbolt energy like dragon ball z style saiyan energy and like it's animated like to perfect Faction. like every, you see the lighting you see like the fur moving it like and you just think oh like this this is the animation where i get why they can't have it like this all the time but i want it like this all the time because it shows that the animators w when they turn it up to 10 when they have the time like there's nothing like it absolutely just stunning and we get the captain as well we get the captain yeah Ash as going, it should be. As as it, as it should be. We got Ash going, we're going to put everything we can into this one last attack. And you got Leon, who is obviously just on board with this because he's like, I thought this battle was done and dusted. And it's not. I'm so happy. And he throws off his hat and he goes, we're going to have a champion time. And you can just tell that like in this moment, they are eight equals, but also like win or lose. I think they just... At that, at that moment are just thinking this is the best fight i have ever had in my life and 
it doesn't matter the outcome because I'm going to be happy and I'm sure the crowd are going to be happy as well. Yeah. It, it's, it, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And then we get the cut to white. Of oh, PG it's a horrible one. fake out. It is because I was like, wait, what? And I knew that I should won, but like, <laughs> could you imagine watching this and you'd never... I was like, is the British release different? What have we... <laughs> Like, <laughs> what happened here? Yeah, and then like because Ash doesn't like straight away go. We won. Like he's more concerned with. Are you okay? Like you just you basically fainted and then went went back for more. And then Leon walks in and we get the confirmation and we get Ash on the podium with his Pokemon. And it's just like to see this journey of Ash coming so far with Pikachu and the teams that he's had and all the times he's come close. And I think back to, you know, the the, the Indigo League and, you know, the, the heartbreak then feeling as a child because I, I as a, as, you know, as a child thing, you know, he's going to win this. Like, that's how it is. Of course he go, is, because oh. that's how it, you, you're supposed to have happy endings. Everything needs a happy ending, right? Yeah. And then to finally get to the point where Ash does get his happy ending. And it's, it, Wow. You no, know, no. Actually, there's, e there's there's even more to this episode to love. It's the fact that when Pikachu, when the battle's going on, we then cut to all like his friends might not be there, but they're all watching. Yeah. You get Misty in the gym who's watching. You get Brock with um Sile Cyrus. No, Sile Chili Silly Sil 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 the green haired brother <laughs> dude. The dude, you get like his Alolan family watching. You, like it just cuts between all these characters who can't be there, but they're all rooting for him. They're all watching. There's this this kid that has gone on all these adventures and all these journeys, and you know, saved the world in the movies. And here he is, and he des he deserves to win. It feels like he deserves to win. Yeah, yeah, it, I'll it, give like, you that. Like uh, he earned it, he earned it. Yeah, oh, he d definitely did. Like that, the battle was like the f it, it always had to come down to a one v one. There was no way they could have done it any other way because if they made it so that Ash had multiple Pokemon still alive, he would have felt overpowered and it wouldn't have worked. So it had to come down to this this one v one. Um, yeah, and, and I love that we get a little bit of Leon's backstory all through this these episodes as yeah. well of like. The first time he got Charmander and how they fought from the start oh, and were yeah. ready to go and he lost. That's what we get he that final to... shot. He lost to Sonya. Sonya, yes. Because in the games, it, it's confirmed that Sonya, they were they rivals. They were rivals. Yeah. And to see that like, oh, Leon was never, it wasn't, and that adds to his character. That, that makes me appreciate Leon even more because like if he'd have won that initial fight, it would have been, oh, Leon always wins. Like, yeah. But he doesn't, he lost. And to me, it's almost like the reason he's so good now is probably because he lost so much as a kid. But unlike other, other children that might have complained or whinged or thought that the Pokemon weren't good enough, he learned from it. And that is why he's so good now. Um, and it also means that you know he's going to take this one on the chin and go, cool, I've still got yeah. somewhere to go. I've still got room to grow. Exactly. It, it, like, it would be great to see Leon come back in future series because he, he's one of those champions where... Like, I wasn't on board with him when the game came out. And then the more I played the game, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm getting on board with this. But the anime is really... Like, I don't think we've ever had a champion have so much time Presence. in the anime. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that ability to, you know, grow on us as an, an audience and we learn more about them. And, like, the, the we, get, we do get one extra thing, which I appreciate, but I would have liked a lot more of, is that, like... This is the first time we see Leon and Hop talk to one another. Yeah. And Leon says he's feeling nervous, but in a good way. And it's like, Hop, sh like, Hop, should, Hop have been. should have been in this the whole time. Yeah. And that's how you have that connection between the two and Ash learning about Leon through Hop. Like, it, like that, that should have been there. And it's so annoying that it, it wasn't. Um, the, the, I've got one last question that I, I, I can completely understand why the anime didn't address this, but how does Dragon Tail work with Pikachu? How do you mean what? With like, it? Oh, because it's not in a Pokeball. Like, how would that work? Uh, it would slap it, and it would slap it back towards Ash, and then would draw another Pokemon out. Yeah, 
that sorted. Um, I'm not going to think else other than praise for no, it, it, it was it was phenomenal. Cool. It yeah, was it, everything I needed it to be. Yeah, and yeah. I was watching it jaw open. I again don't like the fake out. I think that <laughs> ruined the pacing. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that they fake out and then we go back to see the final hit between the two of them. And yeah. then we come back to those two standing there being like, oh yeah, well, we did it. Woo. Okay, now it's time for the award ceremony. I would have rather cut all of that stuff with Pikachu healing up and I think it would have flowed better. Agreed. And like, what the way you do it is Ash wins, but instead of going straight for the trophy, he goes for the Pikachu and goes, I need to, I'm taking care of Pikachu first. Like, trophy can wait. And it just mm -hmm. builds on that character of, like, the reason Ash won wasn't because he wanted to be the very best. It's because he built up a team. Yeah, that's actually such a beautiful thought. <laughs> and the then, idea. And they th start bringing it out and he's there with the Pikachu. He's like, no, my buddy needs me. I'll yeah. be back. Yeah, and just exactly. leaves an entire crowd of people waiting for him. Like, that's such an Ash thing to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're but right. They should have been done that way. It would have been absolutely amazing. But I... It was already amazing. I, I like that. Like I can take it as it is. I, if we get to see this level of animation again, I will be so happy because absolutely cool. Um, should we move on to the guessing game? Let's do it. Let's do it. In front of me, I have three Pokemon with three Pokedex entries each. But Connor, can you spot the fake entry? So. This week, we're starting with Eternamax Eternatus. Nice. Number one. Its true form is a, is a result of absorbing more energy than it can expend. This extraterrestrial being is behind the myth, myth of the darkest day. Entry number okay. two. Infinite amounts of energy pour from this Pokemon's enlarged core, warping the surrounding space-time. The mm -hmm. final entry, as a result of Rosie's meddling, Eternatus absorbed all the energy in the Galar region. It's now in a state of power overload. That one. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah, number one, I'm afraid. Is it? I, okay, yeah. number one was the only one I was really convinced was the case. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it, it, it's um, because I've gone for the Eternity, the, the it's Gigantamax Max. things, yeah. So it does mention Rose meddling, which like really confused me because I don't I don't ever recall a Pokedex entry mentioning, mentioning a person, yeah. A person. Um and yeah, and um there is one of its normal um Pokedex entries that says it came from outer space twenty thousand years ago, I think it says. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, so I'm afraid that was number one. Let's well, move damn. on to the next entry, Gigantamax Cinderace. So, entry number one. Infused with Cinderace's fighting spirit, the gigantic Pyro Ball never misses its targets and completely roasts opponents. Entry number two. In its Gigantamax form, Cinderace has perfect balance. It is impossible to knock it from its fireball. Entry number three. Gigantamax energy can sometimes cause the diameter of this Pokemon's fireball to exceed 300 feet. 300 feet? That's what it that says. On that feels like document. bigger than the stadium. But I'm going to go with the first one. Okay, I'm afraid it is the second one. Really? Again, the one that I like had Confident. full faith in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, right. I think you've finally done me this week. All right, let's go. We shall see. So the third and final Pokemon is Gigantamax Charizard. So entry number one, this colossal flame-winged figure of a Charizard was brought about by Gigantamax energy. Entry number two, the flame inside its body burns hotter than 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. When Charizard roars, that temperature climbs even higher. Final entry. Its sheer size makes it impossible for Charizard to fly. It makes up with this with devastating fire attacks that torches its opponents. Let's go with the first one. I'm afraid it was the it's last one. It's the second one. It's the last one! It's no! the last one. Were you also confident on that one? Oh, well, it was like that. That sounds about right. Wow, I know nothing about Gigantamax Pokemon. There honestly, I was, I was actually, when I was doing the Pokedex entries, I was like, oh, there are some really good, unusual well, because, like, ones. There's, 
you kind of know what Mega Evolution ones sound like. They're always about the Pokemon being in pain and stuff yes. about how they evolve. Whereas I don't think I've read a lot of Gigantamax Pokemon. I entries. haven't either. Because, typically because you... the only way you can do it is to have them Gigantamaxed in game and then go and look at the Pokedex entry for them. Exactly. Which you never do. You never do. Exactly. Which is why I was like, when I got into this, I was like, okay, I know what I'm doing. So you got zero out of three. Do you. Should That's we me to bonus? do it next week. No, oh, bonus. Let's enter bonus round. Bonus round. <laughs> so I, I originally started with another Pokemon. And then uh, when I realized I could do a theme, I backtracked. So the Pokemon I have is Surfetch. Okay, nice. Okay. So entry number one. Only Farfetch that have survived many battles can attain this evolution. When this Pokemon's leak withers, it will retire from combat. Entry number two. After deflecting attacks with its hard leaf shield, it strikes back with its sharp leak stalk. The leak stalk is both weapon and food. Final entry. Calm and collected, it never panics in the midst of battle. It refuses to fight others if it has an unfair advantage. Damn, they're all so good. They're all so good. Oh, right. Okay. I was confident about the first two when I was listening to them, but the third one sounds really good, but I'm going to go with the third one. This is all or nothing, right? This That's is all this or nothing. It was the third one was the fake yeah. one. So well done. Yay, <laughs> I win. Four, you got four out of four. Well done. Well That's done. how it works. Perfect. You've actually broken the scoreboard because originally it was three <laughs> and you managed to score four. So well, <laughs> well done. Uh, let's move on to comments and questions as always if you've got a comment or question you can reach us by leaving a comment on our podcast on youtube by emailing goldenrodpod at gmail.com by leaving it on our discord channel or by using the hashtag goldenrodpod on twitter and honestly if you if you do any of them other than youtube chances are you are getting that question read out or that comment read out so do it i mean to be fair if you do it at all we're likely to read it out <laughs> more than likely so <laughs> let's start with youtube uh so Tony uh, has asked, is there an arcade game that you remember playing that's purely nostalgic for you or have any fun memories playing? House have of the go- Dead. Oh, which one? How- Do you know which one? Oh, I think the first one and the second one. Which one had the shotgun? Can you remember? There was a sh- one with a shotgun. There was one with a machine gun, like an Uzi type thing, wasn't there? I think. Did the original have the pistol? I can't remember. Like they all blew the into one for me. Yeah, no, I can't remember that well. Because mm-hmm. I know, I know. yeah, it might have been one with a shotgun where you do, 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 reload, mm-hmm. shoot yes. off the screen. Yeah, I just remember walking like the docks and you got all the th- big winged beasts flying down at you and then you have to run away from the giant monster that's rolling over the top of everything and breaking it all up yeah. as you run. I love those games. I do as well. games so much. Well, not, mine, mine's similar. Mine's Time Crisis. See, like, I never played Time Crisis in an arcade. I only ever played it at home. How come? Just didn't appeal Because we you. didn't have Time Crisis. Uh, oh, right. I, I had it on PS1 with the light gun, and then yeah. it just was never one of those we had in an arcade. No. I, I used to love Time It was the fact that you could, like, duck and jump up, and... um. I, I, I've got to tell you this, but for my stag do, before I got married, I went to a bar called NQ64 in Manchester. Nice. And for anyone that doesn't know what it is, it's basically just a shed load of arcade machines in a bar. Like, it's absolutely fantastic. They've got really old games in there, like Pac-Man, the original Mortal Kombat, the original Tekken, Golden Axe, like all these games. And by this point, I had been drinking for about 10 hours. I was, I, nice. was gone. I was just gone. I was playing on Time Crisis, and I don't know what happened. Like, it's almost like I achieved some level of, like, omnipotence because they, I just couldn't <laughs> Ultra die. Ultra instinct I, kicked in. I just, I just couldn't die. Like, I just kept shooting. And it got to the point where I was like, I've, I've, I'm not enjoying this anymore. I wanted to end. Like, and it just got, it became a chore. And it just, like, kept popping up. And these, like, drunk lads came up going, you're really good on this, aren't you? And I'm like, I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm still winning. But I absolutely love Time Crisis. Used to play it a lot as a kid. And the other shout out is um, I used to go to this holiday place uh, back when I was young in Wales. And they had an arcade cabinet for Metal Slug, which... Oh, what a game. Like, oh, like, it was absolutely... It's a side-scrolling shooter, but like to the point where it is just overkill. There are bullets on the screen. It's like 
I've never played it, but it's like Cuphead 20, 30 years ago, and it's just utter chaos it's, it's, on the it's screen. It's on the same kind of level as Contra. Yes, yes. Um, honestly, yeah, I absolutely, absolutely used to love playing that. Um, and that's the show for this week. If you've gotten this far, you're just a top dollar, aren't you? Connick, where can we find you? You can find me on my YouTube channel at Captain Fidget or on Twitter at Cap Fidget. And I'm Ben. You can find me as Professor Hoenn Gaming on YouTube and Professor Hoenn on Twitter. As for the Gone Rob podcast, you can find us on the usual platform. Search for Gone Rob podcast on YouTube or your usual podcast app. Leave a like on YouTube or a five-star review if you're listening as a podcast. We'll be back next Friday for another week of Pokemon podcast content. See ya! See ya!